Let's burn a little wood this winter. Well, as a matter of fact, on Cross Country today, Mike Barnacle is going to call on a New Englander, a Harvard graduate, who's decided that he wants to do in his life is collect wood for those people who want to get rid of it. Here's Mike Barnacle on Cross Country. Going to Harvard can prepare you for a lot of things. You can become a businessman, a member of the cabinet, or even president of the United States. This morning, I'd like to introduce you to a man of Harvard. His name is Joseph Thomas Birch V. And here he is, a 35-year-old modern-day version of Paul Bunyan, conquering the woods with a 12-ton tractor and a chainsaw. The butcher. He's more than a lumberjack. He's one part philosopher, one part energy entrepreneur. He owns and operates one of the largest woodcutting businesses in New England. Two dozen employees, half a million dollars worth of equipment, 16,000 cords of wood a year, cut and sold. Why do they call you the butcher? Why do you call yourself the butcher? Well, they call, I call myself the butcher to be out of frustration, basically. Um, hey, quiet the saws now, will ya? Well, one thing is I've always hated trees. You know, I, I, I see nothing more irritating than trees. I mean, the way they wave in the breeze and... It just has always driven me crazy. They call me a herbicidal maniac, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and um, that's why I hate Sundays. My wife won't let me work on Sundays. and I can't kill something, I ain't happy. Anyway, this is, this is the approach a lot of people think I take. Well, actually, I do what I'm told. Uh, when a landowner tells me to cut it, I say, how do you want it cut? And I cut it. How can a man come up in the woods and cut trees 52 weeks a year without going bonkers? Well, I hate the woods, I always have, but uh, it gives me such a, such a wonderful supply of adversity, and I really believe that adversity is necessary, uh, and nobody's going to rob me out of it. Uh, there are certain benefits from um, frustration, stress, uh, irritation. Today's been a very irritating day, as a matter of fact. It, it rained, uh, two trucks wouldn't start, the skid is broken, my sock won't hang up. Uh, his sock. Yeah, my sock. My wife bought some new socks, and I can't seem to get them to stay off. She bought the wrong kind. Aren't there some people, though, or some groups who, who get irritated at a guy like you who comes along and cuts down all of these beautiful trees? Well, uh, I've irritated people to the point at which I would say my life expectancy is probably equal to a combat soldier in the Second World War. I've kept count in the last four years. My life's been threatened, or my equipment's been threatened nine times, uh, twice in the last month. Why would your life be threatened? Why, why would they threaten your life? Well, uh, I, I think that a logger, especially one like myself, it's around a population area that's, uh, you know, that sells to the consumer, is a wonderful symbol. Uh, 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 I symbolize uh, villainy, actually. Um, people feel that cutting trees uh, is a sacrilege, uh, 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 unless perhaps they need some lumber for their, their deck or perhaps a little firewood for an evening cocktail party or something like that, then it's all right. If I'm bringing wood to somebody's house, well, then it's tolerable. But if I'm bringing it to a neighbor's house, then they're big, terrible, smelly butcher birch trucks, and nobody wants it, and they call the local police. What does a woodcutter make a week? Well, I've paid, well, I had one of the top, one of my top choppers, he's not with me now, but uh, I paid him consistently between nine and $1,200 a week. Nine and $1,200 a week? Yeah, yeah, he was one of the top choppers. And What's a top chopper do to make $1,200 a week? He runs <laughs> all through the woods from day to day. Uh, what do you mean by a top chopper? Well, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he makes top pay, is what it means. You know, he's, he's a professional and... Uh, what is he, about 10 feet tall, or...? No, as a matter of fact, he was 5'6", 135 pounds, and he took about 400 vitamins a day. Don't you ever get uh, the desire to shave the beard, to get rid of the suspenders and the, uh, the old blue sweat-stained shirt and put on a business suit and go back to Cambridge or Boston? <laughs> well, I can't work for anybody. I was fired 14 times in my life, and I got the message pretty loud and clear. So, yes, I'd like to go back to Boston, but I wouldn't like to work with anybody. One of the reasons I do this is because it gives me dependence upon no one. I assume that you probably have a wood-burning stove in your kitchen. The house came with it, but I took it out. Uh, I see wood so much each day, I find it uh, too much trouble, actually. Um, I see enough of wood. As a matter of fact, I feel the air has been good enough to me to help my business, so I don't see why I shouldn't burn a little oil to help them out. 10 degrees and three feet of snow, 90 degrees and humidity that makes you melt. Well, none of it matters to Joseph Thomas Birch V. It can't, because wherever there are trees to be cut and wood stoves to be filled, he will be there, chopping and cutting and hauling his way through an empire of maple and elm and oak. For today, this is Mike Barnacle in Hollis, New Hampshire. The one trouble with John Thomas Birch, he just is afraid to speak his mind. There's